So, uh, I turned the camera off and this cop came out and, uh, Pe Mr. Penguin here is like, Why'd you become a cop? And he's like, it's personal. You take an oath to answer our questions, dude. Whether you like it or not. You know, I'm amazed at how unwilling uh, a lot of these uh, cops are against because, questions. Because, because they're are... always on that other side of the fence. They're always the ones that do the, the power mongering and the, and, yeah, the authority. Yeah. They're never used to being on the other side of the fence. You would think that the, the only answer anybody would have is to protect and serve, right? <laughs> like, it's such a simple question. I bet you if you ask one of these young cops, they'd give you an answer right off the bat. They'd be like, oh, I became a cop because I wanted to make a difference in my community. Right. No, you got this guy that's probably been on the force for about 15, 16, maybe 17 years, and he's got a hair across his ass. He hates his fucking job. And he's slamming things on the hood and slamming the door and walking in the fucking like all cranky and shit. I'm like, dude, take a fucking Xanax and just answer the goddamn question. You know? It's it's not that difficult. You ask people questions all day long. How come you can't answer one little simple question? Why'd you become a cop? Why? It's personal. Well, sh share with me. Because I'm pretty sure I can 91A your... I can, I can get a 91A, which is New Hampshire's version of Freedom of Information Act. Find out your application because it asks you on your application why you want to become a police officer when you enter the academy. That's public record. So I'm going to see when, why you became a cop anyway. So why don't you just make it easier for me and just tell me, okay? Now, I would understand if he says my father died from like whatever, you know? More, more cowards. This is a different officer? Yeah, this is sergeant. Okay. Whew. Maybe we should ask him uh, what made you decide to become a cop. You think the sergeant will answer? I don't know. Let's just find out. Because that other guy didn't like it very much. No answer, huh? He's ignoring us. I'm not ignoring you. No? He's he. I have to get a camera downstairs. We got to take a picture of some okay. evidence stuff. He's he he he's in a uh, he's in a he's he's in thought mode. Fair enough. He's in thought mode. Wow, you guys come out late, huh? What? Late. Or okay. 24 hours a day. <laughs> wow. I don't think that's legal. What? I think isn't there a limit to how many hours you're allowed to work? I don't think that's what he meant. He, uh, probably, he probably thinks I meant well, you guys come out late, opening now. I don't know where that train of thought comes from. Yeah. But I meant the shift. I, yeah, I haven't seen anybody till now. We got 311 shift, we got people that come on all through the hours. So. We're always out. <laughs> these, guys, these guys are probably, you know, I'm not sticking up for them by any means, but they're probably overstressed. They probably maybe have like maybe four to five on at a time here. It's a small town. And they literally have the highest overdose rate in the state, right. which overall in the country is number three. New Hampshire wow. is number three in the whole country right now with overall deaths. That's not even per capita. That's overall deaths. And uh, Franklin's the worst in the state. So this is where the majority of those deaths are happening. So these guys are not very happy about their job right now. Mm. Oh. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the liberty community thinks drugs and, you know, drugs and alcohol, stuff like that, are victimless, but I really don't think so. 
I think, uh, um, me personally, I think heroin is a poison and it kills the community and murders people, it hurts families, and makes, uh, makes kids be motherless and kids be fatherless and, and, and mothers and fathers lose children and stuff like that. It's just, it's bad all the way around. I, it's most certainly causes victims. Alcohol, I think, is one of the worst, but that's just an opinion. And I'm not I'm shooting down people that drink casually and stuff. I'm talking like people that can't handle it, that overuse it. But you, I think the, the epidemic here um, that's affected me personally, you know, family-wise, uh, is these, uh, you get an injury, you get put on Oxycontin or fentanyl or Demerol or anything like that, the doctors keep you on six months to a year and then they all of a sudden take you off like that quick and you're hooked on the shit and now you have an, uh, an addiction that wasn't caused by yourself but on your own so you go regular the recreation rule and the, the the easiest way to get that same type of opiate 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 uh, uh, high is heroin and it's cheap it's easy to make it's easy to get it's easy to transport and uh, New Hampshire, a lot of people have been dying. Um, I lost eight friends since January of 2017. So we're not even, I mean, we're in April now, and that's eight people just personally that I knew, and that's not counting everybody else. Um, Ashley Moore was the most recent one, um, who was a very, very dear friend of mine um, that I was pretty shooken up about, actually. Um, died um, three weeks ago and I just found out about it fairly recently and I'm really really upset about that so I'm not very happy about the the heroin thing right now but uh these cops don't seem to be liking their job though and um, how do you think we should deal with it I don't know I, I don't know I, I think uh, low-grade pain meds maybe the you know extra strength Tylenol and you know, uh, I know Tramadol, they, they just upgraded that to a class two um, because people are getting hooked on that now too. But if they keep with a low dose of maybe Trams, which is a very, you know, low narcotic type of drug, you, you almost will never get hooked on it if it's a low dose. Um, and keep it for like really, really bad pain, you know, severe, severe injuries, not just for like just pain and sores and stuff like that and dwindle it down a little bit it'll probably calm down the whole thing but the, the the epidemic is these doctors are not slowly weaning these people off i mean when they're done with these meds they're shutting them off cold turkey so do you think it's fair to say it's a medical problem that needs I, to be dealt with the medical uh, me, i think as th opposed to the police i I, th I think so yeah because you know you you eliminate the need you'll you'll eliminate the greed you know, you you get rid of that greed factor where people are just doing all these pills and pain meds. Um, they're less likely to go to heroin, and heroin usually. Um, but you know they, you know you hear all these. Oh, they did studies and they did studies with this and did studies with that. Blah 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 blah. You know, you know if you smoke marijuana, heavy marijuana, it always leads to something stronger. Well, that's for the highly addictive people that are in that have that addictive gene. You know that that just want to experiment with all kinds of shit and do whatever they want to their bodies. But um, I think if you don't have family members and don't have kids, you can do whatever you want with your body in your own you know own house all you want. It's uh, you know you're an adult. Um, it's seemingly victimless, but when you need to get, take care of children, you shouldn't be doing drugs. Yeah, period. You know you you have obligations and people to think about that will be most certainly affected by your drug use. Um, and I know a lot of people that are in the struggle. Um, five, five really close friends of mine are in recovery, and um, they almost most certainly relapse um, every three, four months or so. And some their struggles harder than others. Um, I never drank a day in my life. Never did drugs a day in my life. Never smoked ever. Um, I have an anxiety about it. Um, I'm kind of, kind of fanatical about not being around that, that type of environment. So I, I can't. I can't come close to telling anybody how it feels to have like an addiction like that because 
it destroys everything. And DCYF gets involved, the state gets involved in eight different ways up your ass. And, you know, not only are you dealing with the criminal aspect, you're dealing with losing your kids permanently and, you know, all that shit. It's just a, it's a, it's a mess. It's a bad mess. So I don't even know, I'm not politically educated enough to even come close to trying to figure out the, the heroin epidemic at all. Have a good night, guys. You too. I'll just pull the 91A and look at your, uh, when, when you filled out your stuff. Feel looking at it. Yep. Because I know you filled it out when you uh, went to the academy. It's too bad you didn't want to answer, though. That's cowardice. Just letting you know. Coward. So they run two, two cops per cruiser. Are you still picking me up on the mic? Yep. <clears throat> Go fight crime. Hey, they didn't put their capes on. <laughs> so this sergeant I don't think is coming out I think he was actually telling the truth he was looking for some evidence which actually makes me nervous because why was he looking for did they lose evidence you caught that on camera right he said he was yeah. looking for evidence that is interesting <laughs> well, he, could be, he could have meant that he's looking for evidence on the side of a road or I don't know something it said oh we're looking for evidence for a case we're working on yeah, well, why did you misplace it? Yeah. Do me a favor, Sergeant. Don't ever, ever become a detective so, because you suck. There's, there's this thing called chain of, uh, let's see, chain of commit, no, chain, chain of custody, I think, for uh, evidence, and you can't lose evidence because then you break the chain. Yeah. <laughs> so that evidence. That, there goes evidence your case. Scotch, there, go, there goes your case. <laughs> You have to be able to prove that. Uh, we're, we're citizens of the state of New Hampshire. Let's go. Citizens of the state of YouTubers or something? What's that? YouTubers? No. Uh, NewEnglandCopChases.com. Yeah, we're media. Yeah. Not free status. What's wrong with the free status? Well, I'm not a big fan, actually. They have a right. They do. I got a law enforcement to protect people, safety of people. Number one, right? Yeah, you got you got that. That was his question. Yeah, protect yeah. the constitutional rights of people. Then enforce the laws of the land, enforce of the city. Well, I appreciate yeah. the answer. So, so um, we're, we're busy in it right now. We have uh, a couple things that we. That's got all you need to say. Yeah, Plus, you guys got the highest overdose rate yeah. in like. I understand. The, that's why. That's why we're here. The state, and yeah. we feel really horrible about it. Actually. Oh, so do we. Um, and uh, we know. We know, yeah, I'm not a big fan of militarized police or victimless crimes, but I truly feel that, that heroin does cause a shit ton of victims all the way around. And <laughs> New Hampshire happens to be number three in the country, and Franklin's number one in the state. So um, we wanted to check it out. We wanted to come here and see the overall, uh, you Mark, know. If the chief talks to media and he does he? interviews, we, we can't give interviews. Yeah. And, and this is this is just pub, this is just public on site. That's why you know. I came and talked to you guys. Yeah. And you're Sergeant Vobel. Vobel? Okay. But I'm I'm, J I'm JP. Nice right. meeting you. That's Doug. Chris. Yeah. Well, uh, we live yeah. I live in the Keene area. Oh nice. I have friends down in Keene. Oh yeah? yeah. Cop cop friends? Both. Police? Oh yeah, mostly civilians. Okay. Who what cops are you friends with down there? Because I'm friends with most, I'm, I get along with all Keen cops, mo yeah. mostly Keen. There's only two I really don't like. Yeah, so, yeah, they got hit hard with the police chief dying, so. Yeah, that's what was sad. Yeah, I, I, I really liked Brian. I, I liked Brian a lot, actually. Yeah. I it's, didn't know him. I saw him at the academy in passing. But he, yeah. He Ru Russo, Russo, we'll see how he does. He just got promoted uh, to full chief this week, so. Oh, good. We'll see how he does. See how he does. Yeah. All right. Well, if you guys need anything. 
let us know. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, nice. Go back in yeah, there. nice meeting you. Find that Evans. Oh no, wait, photograph it. Oh. <laughs> hey, uh, one quick question. What's up with the Humvees? Were they donated by like uh, the reserve unit or something? This is a 1988 Humvees, man. 88, 89 at least. The um, military lets us use them. Oh no shit. So. I mean, the soft tops too, man. That's going way back Gulf one, era. There should be one on one. There's a, a fastback and a soft top. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll, t I'll take a look at them again. Yeah, I like the IROC though. That was all done uh, by donations. Oh yeah? Do you know what's in that thing? A 5.7? 350. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Automatic. It's a real IROC with T-tops. Okay. And, uh, you, just, you guys obviously don't use it for dare anymore, huh? No, we don't. No we fun? Don't. Yeah? It's dare. dirty, man. You gotta clean that baby. It's sitting under there all winter. It doesn't run mm -hmm. them Come on, you guys don't have like all these like possession charges and stuff? Get them on. The court's right there. Get them on some like uh, community service, man. And clean the car. I clean it ourselves. Oh, jeez. That's a beautiful car. Yeah, it is. It is nice. It's one of my favorites. Done. It's really yeah. nice. Yeah, it's one of my favorites, yeah. And it's got the um, Alpine stereo. I had a place in Hooks that donated the stereo. Oh, no kidding. They did the interior. Oh, yeah. Wow, really wow. Nice. You hey, guys, you guys be safe, man. If you guys want to look, you can walk over there and look. Yeah, we already did. We didn't see any. Uh, we checked the signs to see if there's any signs say no loitering and stuff like that. But we, we took some shots of it. How many cops do you, get, you guys usually have on at night? Unless it's secretive. No, it's four or five. Four or five? Depends on the shift. All right, you guys lucked out with the district court right next door. When they built this building, that was all built together. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Wow. It was it's actually very convenient. <laughs> so, it is. And they, and they provide great equipment. This is really good equipment. Are they pretty decent about behavioral and drug court here? I think the court's doing the job, but I... Don't you don't want to make a you political opinion. Yeah, I understand. Talk, you'd have to talk to the prosecutor. Yeah, I understand. Who is the prosecutor for you guys here? Ahern. Ahern? Yeah, he's an attorney. Okay. You guys don't have a police prosecutor? That's him. Oh, that is him. Do you do both? Um, he's a real police prosecutor, Ahern, he's a, but he's a real, he's an attorney. Oh, okay. Who's the state attorney? The, the county, county attorney, attorney yeah. We have, we have a bunch of them. Yeah, because I'm not. I'm familiar with Eighth District Court, Jaffrey Court, yeah. um, Newport, uh, White River Junction. Believe it or not, but I've never been this side of the this side oh, of the spectrum. I've been doing this. I've been doing this for five years. So. I worked over in Lebanon. Oh, did you? Yeah. Okay. 1987. I was over Lebanon. Wow, you were a cop that long? 85. Since 85, you don't look that old, man. I don't drink. Yeah, yeah. That's what I tell people. Yeah, I'm 42 myself. Nice. Yeah. And, and I'm doing the same thing as you. Yeah, 26. Yeah. <laughs> I looked older when I was 26. Yeah, right? Hey, see you later. Be yeah, safe. you too, man. You too.